Okay, here comes the video on the long promised routed network. So uh, what I've got here is a very simple network setup. We can of course attach more complex uh, networks to this router, but uh, we're just going to keep it simple for now. So I've got a new notebook here, and this notebook, if we have a look at the settings, is on a particular network, 192.168.0. That is its network and its net mask 255 all the way. So this part, the first part here, that is the network and it's machine number 10. And I've got a server here, and this is on a different network. So this is on 8.8.8 .8 with a machine number of eight. So trying to keep it nice and easy for us to remember. Now, these two networks cannot communicate. So if I go into simulation mode, if I open up the command line on the client and type in ping 8.8.8.8, destination not reachable. Now it knows the destination is not reachable because it's not on the same network. This notebook can only communicate with things on 192.168.0 as a network. So 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 is well outside of that. In order for us to actually communicate across, we need to configure the router. So let's have a look at that now. So I'm going to go back into our mode here and we're going to have our first look at the router component. So the router has two or more network interface cards. I'm going to call them NICs from now on. You've got one NIC on this side and you can see that links out to the new notebook. And then you've got one NIC on this side which links to the second network. Now we need to renumber these NICs so that they have a unique IP address on each network. So this one here is going to be a unique IP address on this network. I'm going to call it 192.168.0.1. You may recognize this from your home router. And then on this network over here, I'm going to have 8.8.8.1, .8 like so. Now, uh, this router is now set up. Uh, you'll notice in the general tab, I'm going to tick automatic routing, and that means we don't have to set up the router rules ourselves. Setting up router uh, tables is uh, something I'll tackle in another video, promises, promises, and uh, is kind of beyond the scope of what we're going today. So when the router receives a packet on 192.168.0 that is bound for 8.8.8. .8. It will automatically transfer it from one network to the other. Uh, if it's not one of the ones that the router can route to, it's going to ignore it. We've got one last problem though, because this still won't work. And if I ping 8.8.8, .8 .8, it still says destination unreachable. And the reason for that is that this computer here doesn't know where it should send requests when it's on its own network or something off its own network. So here you've got a setting called gateway. So usually the computer can send to anything on 192.168.0 and the gateway is where we send everything else. So I'm going to put it in 192.168.0.1, which is of course the IP address of the router. So we just send it over here and presume that the router knows what to do about it. Okay, we've also got to do the same on the other end. If I do the, just like this, if I do the ping from the computer, you can see it is pinging and it's saying timeout. That's because it's pinging over to here, but this computer doesn't know how to reply. It doesn't know where to send information for the 192.168.0 network. So let's fix this up now and tell this computer over here that this is 192, sorry, uh, 8.8.8.1. So that's telling this computer anything that's for a network that is not 8.8.8 .8 should go to 8.8.8.1 and then the router will forward it on. So if I play it now, hopefully, if I ping, Right.
right, we're still getting a time out. So let's see what I have mistyped. Oh, the gateway for some reason didn't take in here 8.8.8.1, like so. So hopefully that should now be just fine. And you can see it's happily pinging back and forth. Now that we've got a ping connection, we can, of course, open up our web browser and I can put in 8.8.8.8 .8 like that. And down should come our web page. Did I start it? No, I didn't. I haven't started the web server. So start the web server over here does pay to check these things and then now well hello Google sorted so what we've done just to review our steps is first of all we connected these computers to the router we had a different network address on each network and on the router we configured one NIC to be on each network. Then, in order to get the communication happening back and forth, we had to set up the notebook to have a gateway uh, of the router and the computer over here to have the gateway of the router. Now, this is a powerful idea because actually, we can have any number of routers in between going from network to network to network and as long as they have rules to route things in the right direction, then we will find out exactly where our packets needs, need to go. Obviously, you might like to try this with a more interesting network of your own. So, uh, for example, if I wanted to, I could put a switch in here and uh, ooh, I can... Uh, if I can just select this connection. There. So if I remove the cables, that'll do. Uh, I can then connect to a switch on this side, like so. And then I could put another computer in here, like so. And then I'd have to configure that as dot 11. And this would need a default gateway of 192.168.0.1 as well. And this would now communicate back and forth across the network through the switch. This means these machines can communicate with each other and both of them can communicate with the server over here. I hope that was interesting for you. And uh, yeah, uh, I hope, look forward to the next video.